Gypsy, Gypsy. Oh, hey there, fellow wackadoos. Hello again, and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Cubasic Asylum. As always, I am Dr. Doodle, your guide and chief nut job around these parts. Uh, and I'm back because, well, I just won't shut up and go away. But no, I'm here for the next episode of this madness that we call Dr. Dr. Doodle's Cubasic Asylum. Now, if you'd happen to peep the last episode, that one back there, lad number eight. This is number nine now, but if you have peak number eight, uh, that was called Hyperspace. Oh! And in keeping with that theme, we're getting spacey again. Uh, we're doing one this time called uh, Eye in the Sky, or I call it Eye in the Sky. You can call it what you want. But uh, I think you'll dig it. I hope you will anyway, because put some, some work into this one. But yeah, so uh, hang in there and check it out. We'll, we'll look at we'll, it. I'll show you. Hang on. Alrighty, so here's our code. This is program is called, well, I call it Eye in the Sky. The file is actually QBA09.base. And of course, I'll leave a link down that away somewhere to, to uh, download that nonsense. Which, by the way, if you downloaded it, uh, you'll notice it looks a little different. What you downloaded looks a little different than this, but it's because I'll be opting, optimizing this as we go. So let's run this and see what we got. Bing, bang, boom, start. Alright, here we go. And there's the eye, of course. There's the sky, or stars, I should say. Now, if you want, if move up, for example, we go like this, and look at here, the stars start going down. But if you look close, you'll see we've got the yellow stars in front, and then a little farther back, got some white stars, and then way in the distance are some gray stars. So you've got three planes of stars, which kind of makes it look like a 3D star field, uh, which, of course, you can use this for any number of games. You can go left, you can go right. You go down and everything else like that right there. And in fact, if you uh, if you want to just leave like this or maybe like that, it could be it could be snow, it could be rain, depending on what your program, what you want to do. But yeah, the whole idea is you've got three planes of stars: the near, the mid, and the far. And they move at different speeds, all controlled by the the keys, which we uh, the the function key or not sorry, the arrow keys, which we spoken of before if you notice the eye it looks up looks down left and right and I did that just to illustrate the fact that you could have a ship on here a spaceship and if you're going up you you point it upward you draw it upward and if you're going to the right you draw an image of it going to the right or up and right or down and right whatever basically the idea is you can use this to uh, do a space shoot em up or what have you and so there you go that's all it does but uh, it's pretty fun and it's pretty simple and a powerful tool because I'm sure you've seen oh I don't know Galaga or some other space shoot em ups with the stars falling out well this is one way they do it so here we go let's take a look at the code Boop. alright as I mentioned uh, this code probably looks a little different than you you uh, downloaded here and well in fact I'll do this right now to get it a little bit cleaned up yes there's the, the code there now specifically you look here you got this key 16 is equals character 128 plus character 72 key 16 on and goes up up goes up down so basically when you hit one of the up up key down key left key right key you go to where is it Da, 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 da. Yeah, up, down, left, and right. Now each of these, each line is a subroutine. It's got the re return in there, so it does that and returns, does that and returns. But let's take a look back at this here, the setting up the key. So like for example, the function key 16. Well now character 72, let's just take a look. Help, contents, ASCII character codes. What is character 72? That is right, uh, right here. It's a, the capital H. So, we'll escape here. And instead of character 72, let's put in H. And I've done this before, so this here we'll put in P, capital P, instead of character 80. Yep, oh, hit the quotation mark. And then this one, instead of this, instead of character 75, that's uh, K, I believe. Do, 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 capital K and then last one capital M instead of character 77 so that's, that's a little bit neater I think just one letter instead of all the gobbledygook character blah, blah, blah. so run start and sure enough it, it works just as before so good but you know we can optimize this a bit more even if you notice we got character 128 here well what is character 128 all right contents uh, ASCII character codes and by the way check the help for all this information so much great stuff uh, 127 what's going on ah see the next code 
Here's 128. Now me, I call that, to me it looks like a bearded C. I guess it's Greek letter C or, or Kappa, whatever it is. But in any case, that weird kind of C character. But if you notice, no weird bearded C key on the keyboard. All right, no big deal. Check this out. We can select this straight from the help screen. Uh, edit, copy. All right. Now we go back here and edit, paste. So we'll put quotation marks here. Uh, there we go. Delete, 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 delete. And here again. Edit. Copy, edit, paste, edit, paste. Care, come on now. There we go. Edit, paste, and get rid of this. So the weird bearded C plus H, weird bearded C plus P, weird bearded C plus K, and A uh, plus M. Now I remember this. Hewlett Packard kills me. I know it makes no sense, but it's just a mnemonic that I used to remember those four letters. So let's run this as expected. Works just like it did before. And round, round, round. Kill this here. But you know, we can take this even one one step further. Watch this here. We don't need the plus. Just the weird C H, weird C P, weird C K, and weird C M. Run start. Bang. Good. So now, instead of all the crazy character 128, da, 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 all that nonsense, just key 16 equals that, key 17 equals that, key 18 equals that, and key 19 equals that. Now we'll f file and save this so it don't mess that up. It's just, I mean, it's, it's far less, less, less typing, obviously. Uh, I just remember, though, that, yeah, sure, you can, you can type it H, P, K, and M, but that weird crazy C, well, help, contents, ASCII character codes, and there's all your great your graphic characters. So, for example, if you wanted to if you wanted to print um, I don't know this pound note, I guess, that, or no, we'll go with yen. He could be edit copy. He would look like a a crazy looking spaceship or a missile or something like that. So we just go here, edit paste. There it is. Even though we can't type it on the keyboard, we can copy it from the ASCII chart and. and Copy it and paste it in here. Then we just do print, which by the way, instead of typing print each time, question mark, and as soon as you hit a key, boop, it turns into print. Isn't that crazy? So there's that. Uh, we don't need this here, but just so you know, these little tips that you, you figure out as you go. Or some, I've read these in books and things like that, but it's very helpful. So now file save. And another thing we can do, another thing we can do to, to clean this up, in my opinion, and I guess there's, there's no wrong or right. If you do it with the characters, it works. It works. I just like it. I think that's neater. You can copy this to a, file, a separate file with just that code there. And then when you need it again, boom, copy and paste. So now here we go. We're going to load sub stars. Or go sub, load stars right here. That's what this does. And of course, it just loads the stars into the background. And you notice load stars is right there. So there's that. Now... If we look, the do the main program do go sub stars go sub draw i. We do that only once. So why have a go sub? Why not just put it up here, the whole thing up in the initialization? We don't have to do another go sub, which is just a few less a few less steps for the computer to do. I think it, it it speeds up the loading just a bit. So copy this, edit, copy, edit, cut, and we'll go up here. To the initialization, edit, paste, get rid of this return, we don't need that anymore. And as before, run, start, bang, here's our, our pro program, just like it was. Now, if we look here, let's see, file, come on now, there we go. File, save, we'll save this, because when we make changes that work, we want to save them. And again, this to me is a whole lot easier than, than typing all, all the character and the character and the character. Just simpler, easier to me. Plus, you can just copy this whole thing to another file and paste it from, or copy it from another file, paste it in there, boom, done. So, here we go. We, we've talked about setting up the, the arrow keys, these keys down here. Before, you just select a uh, function key, 16 in this case. That's going to be up, so we define it as crazy CH. 
uh, turn key 16 on and on key 16 go sub up now this looks like a lot of code but if you look that's essentially the same thing as that it's just a different letter a different go sub it's effectively this it's a lot of repetition so don't let all this code scare you it's just more or less repetition so let's go to look at the go subs and or here are they where are they uh, all right subroutines up down left and right and it's, here's their if it if new y is less than three we'll, we'll talk about that and then new y equals new y plus one return else return and this is interesting here because in other words what it's saying is you've hit if you have hit the left key and it's uh you're moving it left actually well, you're moving the stars right to make it look like the the, mount, the i is going left uh, but in any case if you hit that then it does all this nonsense and then it returns if you have not hit this key then it just else returns so it just basically skips all that return if this is true then do all this crap and return if not then just return same with this one if it's true then move the change the uh the new x new y new etc you think you'll get that as you work with it you'll figure this stuff out so back up to the top here and here is def, def int a through z You've seen that many times again just it just makes the other our uh makes all our variables integer by default which speeds things up here's all the key assignments we figured that out now the constants we got three constants here x equals one y equals two and opt equals one and again these could be variables as well but just for the sake of, of being different and i figured i'd i'd set constants here now if we look here all right now this here we got far total equals 250. that is the number of stars in the far plane mid total is 150 that's in the middle plane and near total is the is the close plane the closer plane uh there's fewer in other words fewer stars in the front more in the middle even more in the back because they're dimmer you don't see them so well in order to see them more you just have more of them it just looks more natural to me anyway so there are our totals now with dim we're setting up a raise for star far stars equals one to far total which was right here so 1 to 250. But if you notice here, we've dealt with the, the typical arrays before, but those have been single-dimensioned arrays. In other words, basically like a line, just a, a list of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Here we've got dim far stars, 1, 2, far total, comma, x to y. What's this all about? Well, now these are two-dimensional arrays. And basically, what you can think of, think of this like a spreadsheet, if you will. You have a list of here, a list of numbers here, and that's the x, uh, x coordinate. And then you got a list right next to it. You get another list. Like if you had a spreadsheet, for example, uh, a customer name and the address and the age, the whatever, what have you. So you'd have the first dimension. That's the the, the up and down is how many stars that you have, and then the x to y. This is why I set constant x to 1 and y to 2. What reason I've done that is instead of having to have a separate array for far total x and far total y, I just put both pieces of information into one array with two dimensions. So uh, for far stars equals 1 to far total, and then x to y is either a 1 or a 2, which tells the computer, hey, this is the x coordinate we're, we're recording now, or y, this is the, the y coordinate we're y coordinate we're recording. Same here. Mid total equals 150. Dim mid stars, the mid middle plane of stars from one to mid total, 150. And then x to y, that's our second dimension. And near total, same thing, 50. Dim stars, near stars, one to near total, and x to y. Again, so it, it in other words, instead of having near total X and near total Y, two separate arrays, we've got one array that can deal with all these different stars, 50 different stars, in this case, 150, 250. And then this dimension tells the computer it's either X, the horizontal coordinate, or the Y, the vertical coordinate. So next, select case op. Case one equals screen zero, screen width 320, and screen height equals 200. Case two equals screen 12, screen width 640, screen height 480. And select what's this well right now opt is set to one so we run this and you'll see this is screen mode 7 which I believe is 320 pixels wide by 200 high but if we want a little higher resolution we can just set opt to 2 and now it'll be screen 12 run 
start. There you have it's much smaller because it's higher resolution, more stars, and the di the difference here is they seem to run slower because instead of 320, there's now 640 pixels, which means if it moves one pixel in in, in mode seven, that's only half the size in screen t mode t 12. So it looks like it's going slower. It's still going a pixel at a time, and then there you go. But now I like personally I like seven. It's it's easier to see what's going on. So. We'll put option back to one, but that's up to you. You could even try other other screen modes, whatever appeals to you. So so far, we're still initializing the code. We got the, the keys set up. We've set up our arrays. We've selected what option we want for screen. We've got our options set up, and now we just randomize to oh I don't know twenty one twelve because oh I don't know. Anyway, so after that's done, we got our random for if you'll notice right down here, we got for i equals one to far total. Far stars 1x equals integer random. There's the random. We randomize this so we can use this random uh, function here to generate a random number from 0 to 1. And then, of course, it's multiplied by the screen width. So, far stars i, the first one, x, the horizontal position, equals integer random, some random number to 0 and 1, multiplied by, what is it, uh, far stars, uh, I don't know, it's... Uh, Five, 250 excuse me so this basically this 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 comment or this assignment gives you a number between 0 and 250 or well, plus 1 so it's 1 to 250 and then far stars i y in this case it's the first star again but instead of the x coordinate we're dealing with the y coordinate we're recording that equals integer random time screen height not screen width but screen height plus 1 next i so it does all this loads all the the far the far plane of stars then it goes to the mid total yeah mid plane of stars x and y and then the near total the near plane of stars x and y so again it looks like a lot of code but it's a lot of repetition basically you've got a loop that loads the first star loads the x coordinate first star loads the y coordinate goes around now i is two so it loads the second star x coordinate second star y coordinate goes around again three it loads the third star x coordinate third star, star y coordinate etc 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 save for mid total save for near total now we've got all our data data loaded in memory and we're ready to start the program so do and loop this is our main program as we see we've seen the do loop again do do loop while in key equals nothing so as long as you don't press a key aside of course from the the arrow keys we can use arrow keys because we set them up up there but if you press any other key it ends otherwise it just loops while in key equals nothing so you press a key clear screen system done now we got two subroutines to deal with go sub draw stars and go sub draw i Draw I is simple enough. You see it right there in the center of the screen. And depending whether you're going up, down, left, or right, it draws that little iris up toward the top, toward the bottom, toward the left, etc., etc., etc. And let's take a look at draw a star. But remember, let's run this again. Remember, as we're doing, okay, we're going up. But in reality, the I, or if you're going to put a spaceship in there, the I is not moving at all. The stars are going down to make it look like the ship is going up. And likewise, down. The ship is right, the eye is right there, and the stars are going up. And just to be complete, left, the stars are moving to the right, and right, the stars are moving to the left. So, in other words, it, we're essentially doing what we would do backward. Like, if we had the ship moving around the screen, it would be the opposite coordinates. The stars were stationary, but in this case, the ship is stationary, and the stars are moving, which is kind of the point of this routine, or this program, excuse me. So again, draw stars. This is the routine that obviously draws the stars on the screen. And again, looks scary, but a lot of repetition. So let's go through one by one. So for i equals one to far total, we're, we're writing, we're drawing the far plane of stars first. Far star one x, or the the far star, the first star x coordinate equals far stars i x plus new x. So whatever you uh, actually, I should. Let me come back to this. As I was saying, where did it, did it, did it, where did it go? Ah, here we are. With up, down, left, and right. We've got, all right, so we got up. Now, if new y is less than 3, then new y equals new y plus 1. 
What does that mean? Well, we're going to create a new location for this star, and because we want to go up, we're pushing the star down, so we'll put the new y plus 1. Whatever it is now, we're adding 1 to move it down. Okay? That's if it's less than 3, because you got only 3 speeds. 0, 1, 2, 3, back to 0, 1, 2, 3, and same with up and down. 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So if it's less than 3, then it hasn't reached the maximum yet, then... Uh, we do new y equals new y plus 1 to move the stars down and make it look like the i is going up. And then return. If it's already 3 or more than 3, then we do nothing. So up, return, done. Same with down. If new y is less than minus 3, remember because we're, we're gonna, going up here, we want to add new y needs to be, uh, yeah, new y starts with 0, and then as we hit the up key, the down key, it goes negative, negative. So we start with the new y at zero. And if it's greater than negative three, which it is, because zero is greater than negative three, then new y equals new y minus one. This is to make the stars move up because the numbers are going down. And that makes this, the spaceship look like it's going down. And then we return. Else, if it's already negative three, if it's the lowest it can go, then you just if, well, that's not true, so we return. Same with uh, left, um, same idea, it's just x and y instead of x, the two x's instead of the y's. If new x is less than, yeah, less than 3, then it's not maxed out yet, so then new, y, new x equals new x plus 1, and return. What that does moves it to the right, making the ship look like it's going left. And then right, just the opposite, if new x is greater than negative 3, because it hasn't gone this far yet, the keys have not maxed out to the left yet, then new x equals new x minus 1, and that moves the, makes the star position move to the left. Return, and otherwise, if it's already 3, or less than 3, excuse me, negative 3, then it just returns, does nothing. All right, so got that figured out. Now we go to, to draw stars, and go sub draw stars is right here. Hey, what's going on? All right, so now here's the thing I'm sure many of you have seen before. It's just a uh, a blinky blinky solar solar keychain here. It's got usually a name on there, but oddly enough, it gets harder and harder to find uh, Doctor Doodle keychains. So I just went with I went with I love cats. And yeah, I've seen these things everywhere. Some little crap joint like truck stop, gift shop, Congress, whatever. Now the thing is that uh, I didn't really pay attention much attention. I figured, you know, of course they just blink. It's got the solar panels up here to collect light, and they blink when it's light is hits, hits them. But I figured, like, well, here we go. This is like there's on, there's off, there's on, there's up. But it hit me one day. I realized no, no it's just the opposite. That's off. That's on. That's off. That's on. Don't believe me? Watch this. I'll cover the solar panels and look at there. No more blinky. It's just, I love cats. You don't get the black screen. Well, a little bit, but there. No more black screen. So it's off because there's no power coming to it. Let the power hit it and it turns on into black. Which, wow, that I ne never occurred to me at, at first, but then realize you think about it, it's actually pretty ingenious because, number one thing, uh, this, these panels go bad well at least it's it's not just a black screen you've got I love cats or your name whatever you got something you can use but think about this for a minute instead of having a customized display for I love cats or for this name or that name they're all the same they're just black blank screens and they just put different artwork artwork behind them when they're on you don't see it when they're off you do see them so wow who to thunk it I didn't think it but there you go the, that's on on and off so it's really pretty ingenious when you look at it. Probably don't care, but I thought it was cool. Okay, back to the video. As I mentioned before, a lot of repetition, so don't be don't be scared by all this. Here's our start of our sub, draw stars. Now for i equals one to far total. We're drawing the, the farthest the farthest plane first. And far stars one, or i, excuse me, x. So the first one, because it starts out at one. The first star, x coordinate equals far star i x whatever it is now plus the new x now if the new x is is zero like we mentioned earlier then it's not going anywhere but if you hit the arrow keys new x starts going one two and three or back down three two one zero and then it can go down to negative one negative two negative three that's as low as it's going hit the other way and it goes negative three negative two negative one zero so whatever new x is it adds that if it's a positive well then it moves to the what to the right 
yes, to the right. And if it's negative, then it moves to the left. If the star position, the X position, is uh, greater than screen width, then far stars 1x equals 1. In other words, when it draws this, this star on the screen, wherever it is, if the X position on here is way over here, farther than it's, uh, it's greater than the screen width, then we just make this, the X position 1, which brings it right back here. And it keeps going over, 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 over. Oop, we've hit our boundary again. It's greater than screen width, so make it 1. All right, and there you have it. So that's how this rotates. Likewise, uh, negative one, then if it far stars one X is less than one, in other words, zero, then we've hit this boundary. So we just add it equals the screen width, put it way over the far width of the screen. And remember, we, we've uh, put screen width in here because depending on the screen mode, it could be either 320 or 640 pixels wide. So. If far stars X, the first star X is less than one, then we've hit this left, this left hand side here of the screen and we whoop, pop it over here. Now again, for far stars Y equals far stars one I Y plus new Y. Same thing as X. It just, it takes the current position of Y of this, the first star and then it, it takes it Whatever it is now adds new Y. If it's positive, sends it down. If it's negative, sends it up. So that, again, it tests whether it's hit a boundary. And if it has, it brings it around the other side, rolls around. So that's it for this far total. Basically, for the first star, it does all of these tests and makes whatever calculations. Then it goes back here. I is now 2. So it goes and does for the second star. It makes all these calculations. For the third star, fourth star, for the, far, the whole far total plane, then the mid plane is the same damn thing. Uh, near plane, again, same thing. That's all it does. It's just calculating new X and Y positions for these, these stars and places them on the screen. Then, here's where we get to actual graphics. Uh, now, line 0, 0, screen width, screen height, uh, 0 equal box fill. So what we're doing basically is, is drawing a black screen on the black box, excuse me, on the screen. Let's just run this out and see what that does. Run start. So there we have our, our, our program ready to go, and oh, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Uh, see, without that, that black box, the stars just pile up on each other. So what we do, we calculate our new location for the stars. Once we got all this hard work done, time-consuming work, then we draw a black line on the screen to get rid of all the old stars. This lets us keep looking at the, the stars that are there until we're ready to update them. So we line zero, 0, to screen width, screen height, 0, box fill. Or in other words, a black box. Now, we've got screen cleared. So for I equals 1 to far total, P set is just makes a, a particular uh, point, a specific color. So P set, pixel point, uh, pixel set, far stars, 1x, Far stars 1y, 8, and the next dot, next i. So it goes through here for the first one. It finds the x and the y position. It colors it 8, which is the dark gray. Yeah. And the next i it does the same thing for star number 2, star number 3, star number 4. That's the far plane. Now it does the same damn thing for mid total, or the, the mid plane, excuse me, p set, pixel set, x and y, and the 15, which is the bright white, next i. Now, if you notice, for I, uh, the near near plane here, we got circle instead of piece set. And that's because they're a little bigger when we run these, you'll see. But the near stars X and near stars Y, we got a, a circle that is one pixel in diameter or just the smallest circle you can draw. And then 14, which is yellow. Next, it goes back to does the second star, the third star, or fourth star. So we run this, and here we see our nearer stars. They actually look like little diamonds, but if you made them bigger, they would be circles. So that's to make them look bigger, brighter, uh, versus the smaller ones and the farther ones there. So that's what, uh, that's what um, blah, blah, blah. draw stars does. Now we've got draw i. i x equals screen width divided by 2. i y equals, equals screen width divided by 2. Now, the i, of course, never moves itself. It's right there in the center. But we don't know what the screen width is because the option, the opt can be 1 or can be 2. So we just take the screen width 
Uh, where is it? Uh, here, it's, it's screen width, whatever it happens to be, divide by two, that puts it in the center. And same with Y, we take the screen height, divide by two, and that puts it in the center, whether it's screen mode seven in this case, or 12. Now, we just draw three circles, the I, X, and I, Y, uh, 15, 15, that's the white circle, uh, yeah, um, paint, I, Y, blah, 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 15, 15, the paint just paints, it starts right in the center of the screen and paints the color 15, white, until it meets a boundary, a white boundary, in other words, the circle that is the eye. Starts in the center, paints it white until it reaches the end, edge of the eye. Now we got uh, circle X and this, we're, we're new X and times two, new Y times two, and this is seven, which is, um, well, seven should be, I think that's a blue, shade of blue, no, that's gray, what am I thinking? But anyway, paint, paint that, uh, la, 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 la. paint one, one. one. I don't know. But anyway, that's the idea. Basically, it just draws three circles. The first one is the main circle, the eye itself. Second one is the blue iris, and then the third one is the pupil right in the center. And if you notice, the first circle just stays right in the center screen. It's it's X, Y, X, X, I, X, and I, Y. Now, so this one here is I, X minus new X times two, my I, Y minus new X times two, and in circle here, this is the, it's, uh, why is it the same? I don't understand. But basically, it just moves the iris and the pupil around the screen. And here, instead of drawing an eye, if you wanted to have a spaceship, you could draw a ship, and then you'd have maybe eight different images, 16 different images. You could do one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Uh, so eight different directions, or 16 if you want. Hell, you can do 360 if you wanted to, but they'd be an awful lot of work. And essentially, you just figure out which direction you're going in and print the pro appropriate ship to the screen. So, run, start. I think that about covers everything. Uh, if you've missed anything or have questions, just look, go through it again and see if you can figure out what's going on. But yeah, be, be uh, feel free to send me some uh, message say hey, dingbat what the heck are you talking about here and if you notice there's the the iris going up and down with the pupil right there in the center and this is again meant to display the fact or point out the fact that you could put a ship in here going this way going this way going this way so as i mentioned earlier this could be a space scene or just a nice gentle snowfall or a rain shower or whatever you want to do depending on the colors that you set up for your screen for your game your program what have you uh and yeah that pretty much sums it up for this one uh, as far as the code goes and the program uh, it's nothing earth shattering but i think you'll find it fun you mess with it and yeah again feel free to take this code and, and you know, customize it. Put your own spaceship in there. Uh, make the stars different colors if you want. Maybe even draw a planet in this distance. Put it in there. Have a, a maybe another plane with just just planets or just asteroids, what have you. That's all I got for this time. And uh, yeah, so oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. We got superiors coming up next, so don't go anywhere. And we'll see you in just a bit. Hang on. Superiors. superiors. All right, now, any of you wackadoos out there, out there who watched my videos in the past, well, it's your own fault for coming back. But uh, you, you've, you've seen that I've done the superior section where I, I highlight uh, specific YouTube uh, creators and such. But you know, there's more than YouTube out there. And uh, as I mentioned, there are not a lot of, of code-related YouTube channels. But I'll, I'll, the ones I find, I will certainly show to you. However, there's something I need to show you first. And again, this is not a YouTube page, but it is a wealth of QBasic information. I'll tell you, I've got so much information from this. It's a web page. It's called QBasic.net. That's the address, and the page is actually called QBasic Cafe. Hang on one second. All right, so here I've got my browser up. You see, this is Google. I, I, actually, I'm using the Firefox. You can use any one you might like, but I'm at Google right now. And you just search in for QB. Ah, come on now. Qbasic.net. Dot N E T. Boom. Pop that in there. And Qbasic. Uh, is it? Yep. Right here. 
Come on now, bring that up. Pokey thing. Hi, Gypsy. All right, here we are at the Cubasic Cafe as we sit up here. Cubasic. The, the, again, the address is actually Cubasic.net, but the page is called Cubasic Cafe. And where is the about here? Uh, somewhere. Mm, information. Yes, I'd like to give a, a big old hot shout out and big thumbs up to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, where is he? Uh, Dieter Caspery. Now this this. Web Cubasic Cafe was set up years ago by Mr. Dieter. I, I tell you, it is a wealth of information. Uh, there's, there's. Well, I'll show you what's up here. Thank you, Dieter, for creating this thing. It, I'll tell you, it's, it's great. So we go to articles. What do we got here? Overview. Here at a glance, more tutorials. Starting Cubasic beginners. DOS box. Everything you need for beginners. Chapter one, chapter two. Uh, DOS box is again using a DOS box in Windows as uh, starting QBasic part one, two, and three, etc. At a glance, you've got tutorials and let's take a look here. Um, uh, down okay, downloads. Oh, actually, no, no, back to articles. Starting QBasic, there's how you start it out. Here's beginner stuff. Uh, this basically the stuff I, I've covered really just uh, using variables arrays uh, input output that sort of thing then of course the DOS box how to get that rolling so you can use QBasic in these newer operating systems uh, back here let's go to is it home I think uh, no, no actually articles what do we got here nope that's that's what we just saw it downloads now this is where it gets interesting because look here you can download the Q quick basic compiler and visual basic now I want to point out Quick Basic is related to QBasic, but they are not the same. Quick Basic existed first, and it's a full-on compiler. You, you write your programs, then you compile them to strictly the computer, uh, the machine code. You can run them straight without needing Quick Basic. But they wanted to when DOS came, when Microsoft came out with DOS 5, they wanted something that people could use quick and dirty to write some code. So they came up with QBasic, which is a stripped-down version of Quick Basic. Minus the inter the comp compiler, so it's interpreter. That's why QBasic needs to be running in order to run your program. So anyway, you got Quick Basic compiler and Visual Basic Windows compiler, QBasic interpreter. That's what I've been using. Uh, QBasic with Windows games, tools, libraries, tutorials, and this just goes on. I mean, there's all these games. There's all these tools. What do we got here? GFX graphics, okay, sound, mathematics, miscellaneous, libraries, you can set up libraries. Now the libraries, I believe, really work only with Quick Basic, the full version, but you can download Quick Basic, so boom, there you go. Tutorials, top 10, my projects, oh yeah, so Dieter's own projects here. What's he got here? Basic to DOS box, Quick Basic, 45 English, 4.5, Quick Basic 7.1, that's actually the basic professional development system. What's going on out there? Dog going crazy. A quick basic 7.1 is actually the uh, basic develop professional development system which is a uh, it, it's a more advanced version of quick basic even. And so there are all these things here and here's uh, Dieter okay is his tube master demo tube master version one uh, what do we got here? Font generator. Oh, cool. Font generator. I haven't seen that one here. But uh, free Lily. Delete all tiles and free the girl behind the color wall. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'll take a look at that one. So basically, Mr. Dieter here, Dieter Caspery, has created this amazing page. You must check it out. Cubasic.net. Go there. You will find buttloads of information for Cubasic and Quick Basic. But even so, uh, when you eventually one day want to, if you want to, uh, advance to uh, C or, or I don't know, uh, Pascal or something, another more advanced, more sophisticated language, you can use the concepts you learn here to do basically the same stuff, or m even more advanced. And, uh, and of course, here we can go to the, the, the German version here with German text, so that's always cool. But yeah, QBasic.net, check it out. Again, Dieter, thank you so much. This is just amazing. And you, I swear, you will be lost in this page because there's so much great stuff here. All right, that's it for now. And I guess I'm, I'm good to go. And so check out the code there, this QBA, the whatever, uh, QBA09. All right, so that's all i got for you for now. Just go ahead, click the link down there, and download QBA09. Get eye in the sky. And yeah, have fun with it. Uh, tweak it, you know. Tear it apart. Look at the nuts and bolts. See how it all works. This is how we learn. 
Uh, but remember, again, save a copy, and then if you mess it up, it's not working, just reload the, the original copy, and boom, right back to square one. So don't be afraid to tear things apart. You can download the whole thing again if you need to. So that's that, and I guess for now, I got to say, hasta la pizza, baby. Where's the thing? Hasta la pizza, baby. Poof.